Wow. Imran Ahmed is the founder and CEO of the Center for Countering Digital Hate. We also have Candace Wiest and her daughter, Cecilia Nautner. And Cece, you've had personal experience with the dangers of social media. So I want to start with you and, and allow you to share your story, if you don't mind. Yeah, I mean, it started when I was about um, 12. I got a phone and um, I got on platforms and social media. Um, it started out with healthy recipes um, and then slowly, slowly um, rabbit hole into um, Thinspo and different uh, medias like that. Hey, Candace, you're suing Meta. Um, you allege the company put your daughter in danger. Tell us about your lawsuit and where it stands. I, we are currently um, finding more power in advocating and the, what the lawsuit has brought to us and as far as being able to speak out more than we're depending on, you know, suing and, and getting money from Meta. Um, what we're trying to do, you know, at my family as well as the law firm is we're trying to hold them accountable because this has to stop. Soliciting children online for profit with toxic algorithms that are causing mental health issues has got to stop. We're losing our kids every day. CC, I want to go back to something you said. Uh, you said you got your camera at 12. Do you think that you were too young to get a, a cell phone? Um, at the time, no, I didn't think that because all my friends were also getting phones and they were also getting online and um, whatnot. But um, looking back, I think I was definitely too young. I think 12 is definitely too young, for sure. Imran, tell us about your organization and what made you passionate about this cause. Well, I, know, I run the Center for Countering Digital Hate, which looks at a number of ways in which social media can cause harm. But in particular, we were we were inspired by by testimony like that of CC and of other parents that that I speak to um, who say that they worry about the content their children look at. They don't know what content their children look at. You know, it's 10 p.m. They know where their kids are. They're sitting next to them on the sofa, but they don't know who their kids are with. They don't know which algorithms are sending what content to their kids, and we we, we decided that we were going to. St study that. So we set up accounts uh, in four different countries, the UK, the US, Canada and Australia, acting as 13 year old girls on TikTok. And then we recorded what TikTok fed to those accounts. And it was genuinely horrifying. Cece, I'm curious, I want to ask you a question that I know a lot of parents are dying to ask. We saw the young lady in Maritza's package and the number of selfies that she was taking of herself in the mirror. That is not uh, a new phenomenon for your generation, but it is for those who are older than you. What is the fascination with, with selfies and, and, and self-image photographs? Um, in my opinion, um, when I take selfies or when I take pictures of myself, um, it, it, it's almost a form of confidence building. You know, you want to see those pictures of yourself, but it's also very degrading. And posting those, you, you almost obsess over it and only, like, look who can see it. You can look who um, commented on it. You know, it's kind of a whole uh, obsession in general. So um, I think just taking pictures of yourself, it might start out as, oh, I might look good today, but then it rabbit holes to um, who commented on it, who who thinks what did, what do other people think about it you know what i mean so imran you did a study social media study called deadly by design tell us about what you found well this study which looked at what what tiktok feeds to the accounts brand new accounts for 13 year old girls we, we studied it in four different countries so it wasn't country specific we used multiple accounts and each time we told TikTok that we were a 13 year old girl. And then we secretly recorded what the For You page, which is the recommended videos page, gave to those kids. Within 2.6 minutes, within two and a half minutes, it was sending those kids unprompted self-harm content. Within eight minutes, eating disorder content. 
on average, every 39 seconds, they were getting something which could be psychologically harmful. It was sort of a rhythm of constant content about bad mental health, about eating disorders, disordered eating, which is eating in a, in a dangerous or, or unhealthy way, and about self-harm. At the end of it, the researchers felt sort of overwhelmed by that content. And these are professionals, adults who know how to deal with this sort of content. Imagine a 13-year-old girl. Now, there have been um, cases outside of the US, for example, in the United Kingdom, where a coroner's court found that a 14-year-old girl, Molly Russell, who took her own life, that she was so overwhelmed by images on Instagram and Pinterest, like the content that we saw on TikTok, that it normalized the idea that if you feel bad about yourself, the normal thing to do is to take your own life, which is what she then did. Can you imagine that? Seeing these images again and again, unprompted, algorithmically delivered to you, not of your own volition, not of your own choice, but that change the way you think about reality such that you think it's normal to cut yourself if you're in, if you're in psychological pain and to kill yourself if you really hurt inside. Cece, did you feel that way? Um, 100%. And even being off many platforms, I still feel that way from time to time. Well, Candace, I'll give you the last word. Um, you heard her say now that she wishes she didn't have her cell phone at 12. I bet it wasn't that easy uh, to get it away from her. Um, what advice would you give to parents of, of tweens and teens about their children's social media use? Um, there's really no good advice I could give parents on this. Uh, my personal opinion is as parents, we're doing the best that we can. I had no idea this was going on. I'm the first generation to have to parent through this. She's the first generation to have to fall victim to this. The change in my personal opinion needs to happen in Washington, DC. Um, I feel like we can monitor phones and we can do everything we can as parents to try to avoid this happening to our children, but the kids will find a way. There'll be a new site born the next day and they'll find it. Uh, you, there's apps that cover up social media apps for kids on their phones. For instance, it looks like a calculator. No, it's not. It's, it's, you just covered up, you know, Instagram with a calculator. So I feel like legislation is honestly the only way that we can protect our kids at this time. On a daily basis, I would say sit down with your kids and watch what they're watching with them and try to see. But honestly, I did that too. And I, I yeah. just would have never dreamt in a million years that in the four years that we were fighting for our life, they were feeding this to her on a daily basis. I would have never yeah, dreamt. Yeah, it used to be all you used to be all you were worried about were your children sneaking out at night. Now you're worried about them staying in and, and watching their cell phones all night. Imran Ahmed, the founder and CEO of the Center right. for Countering right. Digital Hate. Candace Wiest and her daughter, Cece Netler. Netner. I want to thank all of you for being with us for your insight.